All right. Hey, what's going on there, traders? This is Chris at Verbal Trading, and we're going to come out to you today with a video. It's been a while since we did a little video. We've been taking some time off, and um, mainly because last week we were a little under the weather. Actually, we're still under the weather here, and um, it definitely showed in our trading today. So in this video in particular, I wanted to explain to you a few things about why the trading business is... Um, there are many ways to screw up and there are not a lot of ways to succeed. I'm going to keep going along with that theme probably in other videos I make too, but you know, it's just going along with the theme that trading is probably the hardest thing you'll ever try to do, day trading that is. So let's get on with it now. And um, if you enjoy this content, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel and um, click on the links in the description to support the channel as well. Thank you guys and let's get to it. So. These are the um, U.S. Treasuries, and um, I trade U.S. Treasury futures because I believe they're some of the best products to trade based on my style of trading that I've developed for a few years. Um, I used to trade equity futures, but um, and they're as well. They're fine as well. Actually, the ES is fine. Um, I can trade that as well. Um, there's something about the Treasuries I just like them. They sort of have a they sort of have like a sweet spot to them that I like on most days. So you know. What I want to inform you guys of is that I'm, today I'm going to show you two losing trades, but I'm going to also explain to you some context around these trades. Um, and, and I want to explain to you why or how it is possible for a trader to, you know, have a strict rule, rule book and understanding of certain things that they should not do, but still end up doing them because of factors X, Y, and Z that are in play. And um, basically the reason for allowing an execution like this is mostly because of a lack of discipline in your process. And uh, I want to explain that to you. Okay. So many traders know that we do not give a lot of weight to individual trades, like one trade after the next, like, okay, I made money, lost money, or had a good day, had a bad day, etc. You know, we try to think of it more in the sense of our overall process or over a larger sample set of executions, which is, you know, just a better way of looking at things because it can keep your mind, you know, out of trouble, right? It can keep you from having, you know, a lot of that short-term fear or overconfidence um, with your executions in the short term, right? You have like two winning trades and then you want to start, you know, putting on 10 lots or like 20 times your normal size or whatever. And then um, you have like one losing trade and you want to give up or something. <laughs> And this is common, right? If you're treating every trade in a, you know, trade by trade basis, and everyone's guilty of this, I think, you know, and absolutely, like, even if you do tr treat your trading on a sample size basis, I want to explain to you, you know, why certain occurrences like this right here have the potential to, you know, really destroy your confidence. I want to explain to you why um, these trades right here, these two trades here, right here, kind of messed me up this morning. <laughs> and I want to explain to you, well, first of all, I guess why I took them. And then, um, you know, reasons as to, you know, what contributed to me taking them. So the first thing I want to explain to you guys is that in general, if I show you my trading results over the last three weeks or so, I'm pretty much break even. I might be slightly in the green, but after fees, I'm not green because I'm uh, break even basically. So the average profit per trade, I think is something like, you know, around less than one tick or like something like break even. But it is still, you know, it's relatively good. I feel like my back end is a lot better than where it was, you know, potentially a few months ago. And we've definitely made a lot of progress. But apart from that, what I got to inform you guys of is that no matter how many, you know, rules you have in place, no matter how much progress you've made in your trading, it is still very, very easy, so easy to backtrack in that progress. And all it takes is for you to lack discipline on one trading day. And many of you might know this, guys who have been trading for a while. You know, you have a decent run and then all of a sudden it's over and then you just can't, can't do anything. Or just, you know, the X, Y, and Z factors are lining up in a way where you just can't take, you know, you just end up taking bad trades. Or you're taking trades that are, you know, either they're against your rule book or you're just, you're just taking bad trades, okay? Now, of course... You know, when you're faced with those decisions, when you're faced with these 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 occurrences, you know, it's easy to just say, all right, I'm just going to stop trading until I feel better. Fine. That's a good way to approach it, actually. And um, so now what I'm going to do is explain to you kind of my situation today and uh, in context with, you know, my last few days 
So as you guys hear in my voice, I'm under the weather. I'm sick. Uh, I've been sick for a few days. Um, and this obviously, you know, affects my performance, my overall, you know, ability to focus on the markets and all that. It also affects my ability to get up in the morning, right? So, you know, my sleep schedule has been all messed up. It has been for a while. And this is honestly an ongoing problem for me that I've always struggled with getting up early to trade. Always. When I was trading equities and then now when I'm trading bonds, I'm making life even harder because I have to get up at 7 to, to prep. And that is, you know, you could say it's an arbitrary number, 7 a.m., but I feel like that is the appropriate time that you should get up Eastern time to um, to prepare and uh, trade volatility in the U.S. Treasuries markets because um, they start around 8 o'clock. So, you know, 7, 7.30, you should be pretty much there and ready to go, which I'm not normally. So today is an example of a day where, you know, I was still recovering from my cold and, um, you know, I got up late. So whenever I got up, whatever, I started trading around 9.30 or, or a bit earlier, pre-market sort of. And um, so basically I missed the uh, morning session of the treasuries, which is a very important action to to trade normally on the average day, right? So I would say like eight out of 10 days, the action early on in the bonds is the best action. In fact, some of the best trades I've taken, if I go back and look at my sample sets, are always in the early session. So if I'm constantly, consistently missing the early session, like the 8 a.m. open till about 9 a.m., you know, I'm consistently missing out on good opportunities and consistently settling for worse opportunities later on the session. Now. Obviously, you know, I'm not going to say that there's no good opportunities later in the session because at the end of the day, it's just going to sound like I'm making excuses, right? Now, I'm not going to make any excuses with this. This particular trade right here was a bad trade location, but I took it anyways. And I knew that this was a bad location. I knew upon taking this trade that my stop on this trade was going to be at a high volume node, at the session high volume node for that matter. And also the midpoint of this sort of trading range right here. We're looking at a one minute chart on the on the five year treasuries. So as you can see here in this instant, um, the market had moved lower and then started to recover back into this trading range. And um, in the instant that I sold this, now I will admit this was a bad execution, but I I had believed that the market was done trading through this area at three and a quarter. It had already traded at three and a quarter by the time I sold it. Now, what ended up happening was as soon as I sold it, as soon as I was filled on my sell order, all the offers lifted. In Literally in the, the second after I was filled on that sell order. And I was working a two tick stop for this particular trade. And of course, that's way too close for this. And it slipped one tick and I got stopped for three ticks. So, you know, within one second, I was stopped for three ticks, fine. You know, that doesn't happen very often. And in, in fact, it's something that happens very rarely in my own trading because I, I generally do a lot of work to keep my back end pretty tight on the average day. So on the average day when I'm trading these markets, I'm normally pulling at least two, three ticks a day, at least. Um, but the issue is, the issue with that is now, is that like I told you guys, I've been pretty much breaking even. Like, you know, the volatility hasn't been that consistent. And also I haven't been getting up consistently enough to trade the early morning volatility which is a big mistake actually, and which really is affecting my ability to make money in trading these markets lately. Um, another thing was that we had the Fed meeting, right? So the whole Fed week was sort of a, a write-off. Normally it is for me. So I didn't trade during that week. So I guess you could say we've been really going slowly here, um, which is fine, I think, which is absolutely the right thing to do based on my unique way of trading. Um, but what really annoys me is when I have two trades like this in a row where I lose six ticks in the span of three minutes. And then on average, I've only been like making, you know, one, two ticks a day, three ticks, whatever. And then to make those three ticks, it takes me like an hour or more, two hours. And then to lose six ticks, it takes me three minutes. So, you know, that can be something that absolutely crushes your confidence. And that right there is, you know, what trading is all about, unfortunately, or what scalping is all about. Um, and in just an example right there of like, you know, I'm tired, I'm sick and whatever I pull up, my focus is not quite there. And I end up taking a trade that is a bad trade. And, um, 
of course, there's different ways of looking at this. You know, some traders will say, well, you can't really know if the next trade is going to be a winner. Well, you can't actually, you can't. But what you can do is you can get into a flow with the market. You can get into a state of focus with the market where your reads are like really spot on. So like, you know, you might have five reads and you're hitting four out of five, you know. And I was clearly not in that space today, clearly. I mean, I was tired, I'm, you know, out of it. What is the end of the world is that, you know, what what it took to, to make those six ticks was a lot more work than it took to lose them, you know. All it took me to lose these six ticks was just being lacking a discipline for about, you know, five minutes or 30 minutes, okay? And um, that right there is what I want. Anybody who's watching this, I want you to take that away from this video if you can, which is that I want to show you, I wanted to show you how easy it is to lack discipline in your process in trading and how easy it is to give back profit to the market. And almost, it's basically by design. That's, that's basically how it is designed that it is so easy, you know, based on, you know, emotional reasons or other factors that contribute to your ability to make good decisions. It is so easy to give back profit to the market. And it is not easy to get into that state of flow where you're reading, you know, and you're hitting four out of five trades. It's not easy to get into that state. It's not easy to maintain that state. That's for sure. And, you know, <laughs> that's what I wanted to sh share with you guys today, guys. So, you know, today was a red day in two, tr two trades. We gave away six ticks and that was it for me. I mean, look, I, you know, it took me those trades to acknowledge that, you know, all right. And after that, you know, it's already past 10 a.m. And normally bond, bond market ends for me at around 1030 to 11. Normally after that, you're going to see a lot of chop. So it depends, right? But I'm talking like the average session, like eight out of 10 times my session is over, you know, after 1030 a.m., especially if you started early. Um, so, you know, taking two trades like this, six ticks, I already know at this point that there's a very, very slim probability that I'm going to make my money back um, unless I do something that is out of my trading plan, which I will not do, of course. Um, so, you know, that's kind of trading for you guys, right? So you, you, you sit there for 30 minutes, you take two losing trades, and then obviously the volatility is, you know, over at that point. And then there's a very, very slim probability, if any, that you're going to be able to make those six ticks back and the fees you you generated from them. So that's what it is, guys. And, um, you know, I wish you a great day. Take care, guys. Cheers. Bye.